Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make an ARC Trooper backpack. This is going to be a fun little addition to the Clone Trooper armor that I made a while ago, but you could modify it to fit another costume if you wanted to. By the way, that hole in the backpack is for a speaker, so don't worry about it, that'll get covered up soon. As per usual, the template for this piece of armor will be free, available in the description. The template won't be available straight away, just because I have to actually make it. The prototype that I've been using is in pretty rough shape, so I'll have to redraw it and get it out there for you guys to use. But if you check back in a few days, it should be up there, and you can use it on your costumes. Now let's get into the build. If you've been following along with my channel, then you probably know that I use EVA foam to make all of my costumes. And for this backpack, we're going to be using mostly 6mm thick EVA foam, and we're going to use some 2mm for some of the detail pieces. This part that I'm cutting out now is the base of the backpack, and it's going to be kind of what we glue everything onto. If you've made a costume before, then you probably know the drill, which involves taking the template, drawing it onto foam, and then cutting out the piece, and then gluing it all together, and that's basically what we're doing here. All these little pieces are just gonna get cut out from the template, so don't worry if I'm skipping around a little bit. All of the stuff that I'm cutting out is just straight from the template. I will point out that you should take note of the difference in foam thicknesses on this like center section here where these two circles are. The one underneath is going to be 6mm and the ones on top are 2mm. Now for these panels on these sides, they're oddly shaped but the smaller one is going to be on the right side and the larger one is going to be on the left side and there's a reason for that so just make sure you don't get them mixed up. So here we can see everything all coming together. This is the general box shape. Uh, you'll want to take note that the hole in the center is specifically for the clone trooper armor, um, and that's going to fit sort of on that uh, mini backpack that the clone trooper has built into its back. So if you weren't going to fit this onto the clone trooper, you might not need uh, this hole in the back. You could make a different one. Just depends on whatever you want. And this hot glue that I'm adding here is just purely for support on the inside. I wanted to make sure that none of the panels on the side would cave in. Now that we've attached the top and bottom of the box shape, we can go ahead and start fitting some of the top pieces on. You'll want to note that the top and bottom are different shapes. So mark them down when you cut out the template so you don't get them mixed up. Now I've gone and skipped ahead a lot on this next part, but honestly it's not that complicated. Uh, I didn't even really bevel some of the pieces, but really all you're doing is gluing the pieces together and fitting it onto the top of the box shape. I also added a little stand and a strap for the speaker to hold on to, but those are very simple. There's really nothing complicated about it. And if you don't have a speaker, then you don't have to do this part anyway. Now when attaching the backpack to the actual clone trooper back armor, there's a few different methods that you can try. I tried to use magnets at first and found that they didn't really work as well as I'd hoped they would, so I ended up using Velcro later on, as you'll see, but for this part I just wanted to show you the magnet method. It worked pretty well at first with just the magnets, but once weight was added to the backpack with those PVC pipes that we'll add later, and like when I put the speaker and my phone and stuff in the backpack, it really weighs it down and the magnets just aren't enough. Now moving on to those tube things we see on the backpack, I decided to use PVC pipes and I cut this one at an interesting angle to make this uh, bottom piece kind of curve outwards as you can see in the show. I highly recommend a PVC pipe cutter for this part if you do plan to do it. It'd be pretty difficult to cut this otherwise. And then we're just going to plug the holes with some EVA foam.
so now we're going to move on to painting real quick and I wanted to paint it before I attached the tubes onto it because it would be difficult to paint underneath of them. The paint that I'm using is called Plaid FX. It is specifically made for EVA foam cosplay, so it's very flexible to match the EVA foam's flexibility. On my clone trooper, I used normal spray paint, and it chips off all the time since the foam is really flexible and the paint is not, so definitely use something like Plaid FX paint if you're going to make EVA foam cosplay in the future. From what I can tell, there is no spray-on version of the Plaid FX paint. It is purely from a bottle where you have to brush it on, which is not a problem but just be aware of that. Now moving on to those pipes on the backpack, we're going to wrap them in some EVA foam just around certain areas to match the look of the TV show. This little rectangle that you can see here has been scored a little bit on one side, and that just means that I cut slightly into the foam to give it a little groove, but not all the way through it. And I'm using contact cement to attach this little rectangle around the PVC pipe because normal hot glue or super glue just isn't strong enough to hold it together. Together. Once that contact cement has dried and we're ready to stick it together, you'll want to make sure that you wrap the foam the right way around where the little groove is more towards the bottom of the pole. Also I did bevel the bottom edge of the rectangle so it's going to be at a slight angle whereas the one at the top is just going to be flat. I also wrapped it around the pole at a position where the seam line would be least visible. So that's another thing to take into consideration is there's going to be a seam line somewhere when you wrap this around so you'll want to make sure it's in the least visible place. There is a second pipe on the backpack and we're going to wrap that one in some two millimeter foam. This is the green stuff that you can see here just to give it a little bit more width and just like the last one we're going to wrap some foam around the top of it. This is going to give it that look in the TV show. I'm not really sure what these tools are but this is what they look like. Now I won't deny that the bottom piece that I attached to this pipe is a little different from the one in the TV show. I just couldn't figure out a way to get sort of a rounded shape on this end. So this is what I came up with, but I think it's close enough. And now we're going to add some stilts to the backpack just to make the pipes stand out a little bit like they do in the show. Now back to some painting. This little rectangle on the backpack is going to be gray. So I just masked it off with some green masking tape and started painting. I had to give it several coats, by the way. Those little rectangles on these sides are also gray. Now let's move on to some weathering, and this is just going to be a quick process. I'm going to take my paintbrush and get some gray paint on it, and then just run it along the edges. This is a technique called dry brushing. It's just where I kind of brush outwardly at random angles, making sure to keep it random. Although it's not totally random, you do want to have most of your weathering marks going in one direction, so they're not all just going in totally different directions and also make sure that there's not a lot of curves and your weathering you want most of your scratch marks to be in straight lines only now I've gone ahead and painted the pipes that are going on the backpack those larger sections are going to be in gray and the base of the pipe is going to be in black you'll also want to make sure you weather those gray sections with black paint and the black sections with gray paint because it really wouldn't show up if you used black paint on black paint you know. So then you just have to glue those pipe sections onto the base of the backpack and then you're all set. did add some velcro as you can see here and this will help secure it to the back of the clone armor a lot better than those magnets will but I left the magnets on just as a guide 
As for the speaker, you can see it sits on the back and points outwardly. If you have a different sized speaker, then you may have to change around some things or reposition that panel that it sits on. But so far, it has worked perfectly for me. The only issue I've had with the backpack is some weight, where the size of the clone armor tend to open up a little too much. But that could be fixed with some elastic around the waist. In the next clip, I'm going to show you how I attached it to the clone back, and unfortunately, I had to put Velcro on the clone armor permanently. Now, I don't plan to take this off, so that's okay with me, but if you wanted to have it removable, then you may have to be creative. Otherwise, that's about it, guys. This has been a fun little project, and I'm glad I was able to get this in before Halloween, but I had to rush it quite a bit, so it's definitely not perfect. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting me through this, and for sticking with me through the breaks. This semester is coming to an end, so I'm going to have a little bit more free time coming up, so be on the lookout for that template, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!